Well, after crunching the numbers, we can officially announce Eddie <laughs> Wu is Australia's favourite maths teacher. Official. First finding fame on his Wu Tube channel, the educator fast multiplied his success with 80 million views online, inspiring kids and adults to get excited about the subject. I love that maths helps us understand and wonder at the world around us in a deeper way than we could otherwise. It's really about taking what I love and just saying, you know what, if we put that on a platform that can access the world, there's no limit to what we can achieve. Despite him making us feel stupid, we love Eddie. Now the <laughs> Australian local hero has put pen to grid paper sharing his life story in a brand new biography aimed at pint-sized re readers. He's proving that following your dreams is just as important as your ABCs and your one, two, threes. Eddie Wu joins us live in the show. We love having you in here. Hi, Eddie. Hey, Kylie, Larry, thanks for having me back. Um, Always a pleasure. Let's just talk about 2020 just really quickly. Sure. You one of the first take teachers to take your classes online which now has proved to be like you're ahead of the game you must have I, found the uh, adapting very easily did you it was something which i was really delighted to yeah. be feeling like i'd involuntarily been preparing for for several years yeah. speaking to a camera and having to interact with my students uh, online rather than face to face we definitely miss being in the classroom so much and grateful to be back there now mm -hmm. uh, but it was something where every teacher really had to reinvent the book almost overnight when we all went into lockdown so you were okay with that but what about the other teachers who who weren't used to using that medium and, and, and relating to kids like that. How did yeah. they go, do you think? Yeah, steep learning curve for yeah, sure. Right. Though I do think, I, I think we've learnt so much from that, even though it was a very violent kind of, all right, we're doing this. Yeah, and I, right. I wasn't joking about overnight. Right. It was a very yeah. sudden change where you might remember your kids kind of like, right, we're all going yep. home now. Um, I think that we've learned tremendous things about how to help our students and support them in mm. remote ways that we can now keep on doing even when we're back in the classroom. Yeah. There's a, a draft, a new national curriculum expected later this month. Now, there are concerns that the current system, under the current system, on average, 15-year-old Australians are three and a half years behind students in China. Mm. What do you think should be included in the new curriculum? Where does it need a little tickle up, Eddie? It's really tr tricky to think about this because curriculum documents are something which teachers and students all used to think about, what are we supposed to teach, what are we mm. supposed to learn? Um, but it is really different to say what's in a curriculum document versus what are we actually doing with our kids in the mm. classroom? What's their daily experience like? There's always a bit of a, a gap between there. So in terms of you know, changes that are happening at the moment. I think it's really wonderful that there's a renewed focus on problem solving yep. and reasoning. Those are really valuable. We want our kids to be able to do that. But at the same time, I, I think we need to be careful about, say, the international benchmarking that compares us with uh, countries around the world, OECD. There's only so many things that can come through on fairly narrow assessments like that. Mm. So we always need to take that with a grain of salt. Okay. Oh, but parents love those. Parents love those graphs, don't they, and those we do. survey results? <laughs> <laughs> now, it's just not what our kids learn, but how they learn. And you have this second WooTube channel dedicated to teaching teachers. So what's your advice up to creating an engaging lesson? for your students, your teacher students. Yeah, I do remember the first time that I thought to myself, wow, these student teachers who I'm now meeting in, uh, in, in my school as a, as a teacher trying to mentor them, I thought, wow, these guys are just kids. And that, that's when I realized, oh, I'm in this next generation. I have a responsibility. Yes, you're old now. To, yeah, <laughs> yes. thanks. It was a, a very euphemistic way to say it. Um, but for me, you know, when you asked about what advice do I give for helping teachers be engaging to, like you said, our kids, Really knowing our students well, knowing what makes them tick, what interests them, and being able to yeah. connect what I'm teaching to the things that drive them, motivate them, that's really the key. Mm -hmm. Now, you do uh, tell us about this new bi biography. And there's sort of these stories aimed at kids who were just like you at school. Mm. Tell us about your experience at school and why you... I think it's important that you put it in this book. Yeah, so this is a little bit different to books I've been involved with mm -hmm. in the past in that, like you said, it's a bit more biographical. So it goes all the way back from my early life and tells the story of how I came to where I am now speaking with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe answers the question in terms of why is it valuable for um, children to hear the stories of how people like uh, myself or you know, Munjid al Muderis, the surgeon, or uh, Georgia Ward Fear, the reptile biologist, how do they get to where they are now? Often it was through, through challenge but and you, through difficulty. But you're saying it wasn't cool to be the kid who was good at maths at school. <laughs> well, wasn't cool and also wasn't necessarily where I came from. So being able to embrace that struggle and to know we don't just you know, pop out and here we are, instantly we are a gifted 
and, and skilled, that comes through a real uh, journey of challenge and being able mm. to overcome those difficulties. So there's also, uh, in the series, also shares the stories of some other STEM star stars. Who else has been included? Yeah, so I mentioned uh, Munjet and oh, uh, Georgia before. Yeah. Um, you've got, say, for example, Fiona Wood, who's the inventor of spray-on skin, yeah. so particularly helpful with, with burn victims. Yeah. And to know her story of innovation um, and to know all of the challenges there that she overcame and the life and death situations that she had to wrestle with, for me, such an inspiring story. So, Eddie, you're hoping some little 10-year-old or 11-year-old boy or girl reads your story and goes, you know what? I, I love I love maths and maybe I could make a go of this and make it into a career or mm. it could lead me somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard for children to be something that they can't see first. Mm. And, you know, for example, um, Gisela Kaplan, who is um, a bird and primate specialist, um, her story of, you know, coming to Australia and the journey she's been through, I hope encourages and inspires many people out there as well. Yeah, and as you said earlier, I mean, there might be someone watching this who thinks one day I can be on the morning show. <laughs> We can all aspire to such If, if I Larry. study hard and write all these books and change the world, one day mm. I'll be there with Kylie and whoever else is hosting when that guy's dead. Um, good to see you, mate, as always. My pleasure. Love you it. can pick up a copy of the new book, Eddie Wu, Superstar Maths Teacher, part of the Aussie STEM Stars series. It's out now. One of our favourite guests, thank you, mate. Just ahead. It's the art of haggling dead. Why more Aussies uh, than ever are missing out on bargains.